Hi, everyone, and welcome to Good Morning Sunshine. It's a show about mental health, mental strength, and overall well being. I'm your co host today, Brandon Lee, alongside my good friend, Carrie Pena. And we are so excited to bring you this episode. We're focusing today on what spirituality means to you and how this ties into mental well-being. So we have a beautiful show lined up. I'm all about spirituality. You know I that, know. and I can't wait. We've got two incredible guests on today talking about spirituality in kind of different ways. Yes, uh, because there's one thing to you know train your mind and mm -hmm. have a strong mind, but how do we take care of our heart? Yeah. And what role does that play in our spirituality? So we're gonna be talking about that, but we would love to hear from all of you. Uh, share with us what spirituality means to you, and we love when people follow along with us on our YouTube and our social media channels. Yeah, what things are you doing in your own personal and daily lives to bring spirit that spiritual component into your life? And I love hearing how other people, you know, what their modalities are. Do they wake up in the morning? Do they do yoga? Do they meditate? You know, do they go to the lake? Do they go swimming? Like, what are things that you do to bring that spiritually compo spirituality component into your life? And we're gonna bring our first guest in here in just a moment, but I wanna know from you, B, what do you do in the mornings? I mean, when you wake up, is there something that you do that helps you? Yeah, I, I jump in the shower. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I begin <laughs> getting ready for my day. Um, <laughs> I'm not a morning, <laughs> listen, I'm not a morning I know person. You are Maybe not. I should. But no. But you've worked on your practices. Oh, absolutely. You have worked listen, hard. I, I absolutely do. And there's different things that I do in my own spirituality and, you know, to find that grounding, right? To become grounded again with earth. And one of the things I do is I go into my own art studio and I paint. I kind of tune out the world and it really helps elevate me into what we call an alpha state, brings down the heart rate a little bit and just allows me to find that peace. It's where I really find a lot of my spirituality. I was told along the way, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Robert Cogadell, he owns AccuHealth and he said to me one time, what's really Really important is that you walk outside, mm -hmm. at least touch the ground in the morning in some capacity, even if it's just walking out on your patio. Right. Just touch the ground with bare feet and kind of get grounded. Yeah. And I always kind of remembered that. So you just sort of take a beat. I like that. Maybe and you should go try that. You <laughs> might try that could help. Before I jump we'll try in the anything and else. <laughs> <laughs> and now we want to bring in our first guest and our story behind the story, a good friend of ours. Yes. And she is here with us at the Center for Positive Media, Anna Kubicki. Thank you so much, Anya, for being here. We appreciate you. You. Thank you for having me. So we want to talk to you about this exciting project that you are working on, the Love Tower at Asha. Yes. What is this all about? Thanks for asking. This is a brand new project that right now is in very early stages, but we are building an actual tower dedicated to love. It's going to be based in Puerto Rico, and imagine just like the Statue of Liberty, or the Eiffel Tower, a monument that stands tall to remind and unite all of humanity on love. Everything that is so innovative all comes out of a space of need, right? There's a reason why people create things is because there's a lack of something that is needed within our community and just within the world. What was the inspiration behind somebody saying, we need a love tower and why? We live in such a divided world and we really needed a symbol. We needed a symbol of unity for all of humanity to come together and remind all of us about our true essence. We are love, we come from love, eventually we return to love, and we're making a big statement, a huge visual 210 foot tall statement on the beautiful island of Puerto Rico that as human beings, we are going to believe in love. And in a time that we're so divided, I think it's incredibly needed. So Anya, you are a, a PR and media specialist. How did this project come to you and why is it so important for you personally? Right, it's an incredible story because there are 26 of us founders that have found our way to this project. And honestly, when I speak with the other people, the project found us. Every single one of us agrees that we were somehow called to this mission. Now, I know that I sought a purpose for my life, and bringing love to the world was something that I always wanted to do, and I didn't really know how to go about it. Then I heard of the group of people that were building the Love Tower in Puerto Rico, and I was instantly drawn to the idea. Now, the programs and the continuation of so much work that was done with 5 to 8 hertz, we are vibration. So this tower will have programs that include meditation and heart-enhanced music experiences, and that just called to me instantly. 
So people I know are asking about this because I've already spoken to people. Yeah, they're doing this crazy thing. It's called a love tower. It's going to be in Puerto Rico. The first question is, what are they going to be doing there? And what will I experience when I eventually go visit? Very valid question. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wanted this tower. So we're building really the eighth wonder of the world. Right, which is so exciting. But imagine if you had a chance to participate in the creation of such an important monument. So that is what we're giving everybody the chance to do. Once the tower is completed, the grounds will hold meditation. It will hold programs where we're going to educate the visitors, but especially children too. We really want to educate the younger generation and inspire them to drop into their heart space, to vibrate at this higher caliber, and to focus on love. That is primarily what's going to happen there. There will be music-enhanced heart meditation programs and um, all sorts of other ways of humans to gather together and really celebrate our essence, our true essence. Anya, I find you to be one of those people that everyone who meets you when they come here to the Center for Positive Media, uh, where you also have an office, um, and you travel all the time. You travel all over the world. Uh, but people are always taken with your authenticity mm -hmm. and your heart. How have you lived your life in a heart-centric way? And what component does spirituality play for you? Thank you for that question. I think living with integrity is the best way that we can show up authentically, right? And the Center for Positive Media makes it so easy because we are all here. We all align. I do believe that we bring into our lives what we resonate out. Mm. So it is no wonder that we all get to sit at the same table here. And it is also no wonder that so many incredible people came to build the Love Tower. I try to show up in the way that makes me feel like I'm giving something back mm. and that I can honor people exactly where they are at, which is partly what has me so excited about the Love Tower because it will help us do that but on a global scale. Is there a place where people can go and actually look at an image of what this will be? Yeah. Thelovetower.com okay. is the website, and we do have the actual vision, the mission, the way to get involved right now. And we will be having events. We already had our unveiling in October, which was incredible when we unveiled the design. The designer is actually based right here in Arizona, too. Mm, yeah. Christine Wolves with the luxury look. Anya, well, we love you, mm -hmm. and we're so supportive of your mission. So thank you so much for stepping into the studio, um, taking a break from your busy work day to come in here and, and chat with us about this. Thank you so much. And now to our inspired story. We are super excited to be working with a group from Recovery in the Pines, specifically a gentleman named Albert Black, who founded Recovery in the Pines. And he has quite an incredible story of redemption and recovery. Yeah, you know, I met Albert um, in the summer of 2022 um, when I was planning to expand my business up in Prescott and was just having business meetings. And, um, you know, we ended up grabbing dinner one time and we just both found each other's stories very, very interesting. And, you know, Albert is somebody, and hopefully he'll talk about this, you know, Albert is somebody who up until this point of life has never wanted to show that vulnerability, right? And he uh, is showing it now. Yeah, because he's a tough, he's a tough dude. He's a tough, he's a dude. tough dude, but between every tough dude, there's always a softy inside. And so uh, really it is the ultimate story of redemption, but not only redemption, healing himself so that he can help others heal. So here's a clip from my podcast, The Next Chapter and uh, a bit of Albert Black's story. A lot of people go back after being sober for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to forget, so I just stay mindful every day. I'm not walking around on eggshells. You know, I'm not, I, I go and do what I want, but I also don't put myself in situations that I know are dangerous. So do you stay away from all substances, including alcohol? All, all, all substances. I don't even like to eat food that's been cooked in alcohol. Mm. I don't take cough medicine that has alcohol in it. I don't take anything. I don't take any mind altering substances. And for each person, the journey is different. I mean, some folks can, you know, if they've had a cocaine addiction, they can handle having some wine or what have you, right? Like, or do you subscribe to that? You should cut everything out. I believe out? In, all, in abstinence. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, if someone, let's say they were addicted to cocaine or marijuana, if you drink, we all know when you drink, you relax, mm -hmm. you have fun. You're just more susceptible to things. I'm not willing to take that chance. You know, yeah, I'd like to have a beer, but I know if I have a beer, I just open the door. Uh. 
because then I'm going to have two beers. So in your mind, when you have an urge, because I'm assuming sometimes that comes up where you're stressed and you're like, God, what do you do to gut check yourself? Well, I have I have people around me that are just like me. Mm -hmm. So I talk to them. I talk to my wife. I mean, there's she knows when I'm stressed. Um, I don't necessarily, you know, I, I feel like everyone else. I have good days and bad days and all the challenges that we have with life. Um, I just, um, you know, when I feel like I need relief, I just, I have a solution today that a lot of people haven't been afforded, but in my recovery process, I've, I have tools that I use and, um, I feel blessed. By the way, we're very excited about our partnership that we are going to be launching Recovery in the Pine show coming up here, uh, January, 2023. Yes. Um, and it's going to be all about faith-based recovery and how to bring that spiritual aspect into your life so that you can truly recover from the trauma that people have experienced. Yes, Albert and his partner, Doug, mm -hmm. will both be appearing on the podcast with you to really dig deep into those stories All the of issues. healing, yeah. spirituality, faith, and how for both of them and for you in and a lot me. of ways, it helped you turn faith your has life a around. Huge role yeah. In my life. yeah. Thank you so much, Albert, for that interview. And now our Mind, Body, Spirit segment. We are super excited to have this wonderful lady here in studio with us, Katie Kyleen, who is a spiritual psychologist. You have a lot of titles. I do. But I, I felt like that was maybe the best one to <laughs> land on. And we're going to talk to you about the untapped power of the heart. Thank you for being here. It's wonderful to be with you guys. What does that mean that, uh, when you talk about the untapped power of the heart? What do you mean when you say that? You know, most people don't even know what the heart is, guys. You know, um, the heart isn't just an organ that's beating, and it's not just a chakra. It's actually a center, a governing center within inside of our energy field that is equivalent to our body, that's equivalent to our mind, that's equivalent to our soul. And when we're in the heart, we actually completely step out of fear into love. Mm -hmm. So it's impossible to be in the heart and to be fearful that day. And so the heart is the place we go to when we step out of duality, you know, and come back into peace again. I'm wondering, and I, I could, I feel Brandon, he's thinking, he's like, I could, t I could see that we're processing what you're saying because it's so interesting. How does one figure out how to move? Because a lot of times we, we need to move maybe from our mind to our heart. How do we figure out how to do that? Absolutely. And actually, this is the pandemic that we're really going through right now is, is people have disconnected from their hearts and they're just working with their mental energy right now. They're just working with their mind. The heart has this amazing ability to encompass your mind completely in its being. It's actually an encompasser. And so one amazing thing to do every day in the morning is always begin with the heart, is to sit center in the heart and allow for the heart to actually hold your entire mind in its safety. Because when it does that, you literally cannot have a negative thought anymore. It, it brings your dial back to love again every time. That's so fascinating. Now you, you do like services. I don't even know if that's the right <laughs> word to use, but I will use, I'll use the word services for this point in time, but you actually gather groups of people weekly, correct? Every Sunday? Um, you... Yeah, we have classes and workshops and- But you do large groups. Talk to me about what you do in those, in those sessions. I, I would call it a session. What do you do in those sessions collectively as a group? So whether it's a group or whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we're really bringing people back to their truest state of being, which starts by entering into the heart. So if we're in a group meditation together, we're drawing everybody's energy back to where it should be positioned in the first place because the heart is where our purpose is. Our, the heart is where our truth is. It's our inner GPS system. And it's the one that says, do I go with this tax accountant or do I go with this, this tax accountant? The heart will give you the answer. Or do I date this person or do I date this person? The heart will give you that answer. But the problem is, guys, is we're so disconnected from the heart that we just go through these situations without listening to its voice anymore. And then we get hurt and then we say, why universe, why? How do you, uh, t when you're talking to folks at your, at your healing sessions, 
Do you talk to them about dealing with trauma and, and past pains, but doing it in a heart-centric way? And if so, what do you tell them to do? Totally, because we know trauma has become such a big word, right? This past um, five years now, all you hear is the word trauma. Trauma's always been around, you know. We used to just call it uh, a painful blocks or patterns. Now we just have a, a new word for it, right? And trauma, there are a few ways of dealing with it. A lot of uh, modalities and therapies right now have you focus on releasing it, clearing it, looking at it, going back into the past, into those times that were extremely painful to or reprocess. horrific and reprocess it, exactly. But that's actually a really hard way of doing it because when we do it that way, we have to go through the suffering of it again. Some people even have you bring it back up into your body and literally shake it out of you, right? right? And when we do it through the heart, it is so gentle and graceful where we can go through the healing, but we can go through it without the suffering anymore because the heart has this amazing way of entering into the mind, taking all of that trauma, bringing it back into center where it unifies it back to the truth again without having to go through the vomiting and the crying and the this and, and the that. Not that any of those things are wrong Oh, not at all. All those therapies are breathtaking and they have a place. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying there is an easier way that people have forgotten about. And that's why we're calling it the untapped power of the heart. People have forgotten that the heart can actually do that for you. What do you want to leave the audience with? A bit of inspiration. If someone's listening, watching you and thinking, oh, God, I love what she's saying. What do I do? How do I try to tap into this? Yes. Uh, what I would leave the audience with is if you have to have any sort of practice, you know, even if it's just half an hour in the day, let it be centering yourself back into the heart um, more than doing any other work um, because then your entire day, every single action can come from such a truthful, authentic place, you know, instead of from a fearful place. I love it. Katie, thank you so much. And where can people find out more about your work, you, you travel all over, you're based in Arizona, but where can people find you? Um, www.arizonaspiritualevents.com. And now our sunshine story, and we're so happy to have our executive producer, Christina, because <laughs> she's the one who actually always finds these stories, yes. so we thought, why not have her actually explain the story? She is a now co-host of this show. Yes. The sunshine story. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> This is, this is really, we want to leave each show with a sunshine moment, and we try to find someone who's doing some kind of good in the world, and you do such a great job of finding this. So who did you find today? So today, I know Brandon loves that I find most of my people on TikTok. Yes, I do. But I was actually able to meet the creator of these candles, which are called uh, Coco's Candles, and they're named, their founder is Janine Kokosinski, mm -hmm. and they're really neat because how she came to be was that she unfortunately had a son that passed away. Uh, he was a month old from a congenitive heart disease. And she, being in and out of the hospital, discovered that people would get candles as gifts, but they can't burn them. Mm. Because candles most likely are have a toxin in the air when they omit. Mm -hmm. So she was seeing all these families who wanted to have that spirituality, wanted to have that comfort. You know, we do an altar, we do all these other things. A candle is a big part of that, but they couldn't use them. So she decided to use her time and her uh, son's memory, Matthew was his name, and decide to gift candles that people could use. So these are all soy candles with a, a cotton wick. And at the end of these candles, and they do smell actually, and they're all so, natural scents. So pretty. And she has a variety that are there. Oh, those smell beautiful. Yeah, they really do. And they burn for about nine hours. And because it has to do with her um, son's heart condition, at the bottom of each candle is a silver heart. So once the candle is burned, you actually get this heart that you can take with you ah. and like keep the memory of whomever gave you that candle um, with you, wherever you'd like to go. That is so beautiful. Talk about a sunshine story. Yes. Mm, that's amazing. Kind and, of turning pain in, into something yes. powerful and purposeful for other families. Families and to she, find a little piece she started as a, as a charity project because she wanted to give back to the, the uh, a foundation that was close to her heart. And as a person who has two heart conditions myself, I was like, oh my God, 
I know, what, I know like one of the five times I've ever seen my mom cry was when I was like doing a lot of tests. So a mother's struggle is very real and how wonderful was it that she was able to create this and give. I mean, the whole yes. point is to give. That's beautiful. And, and she has, these are in this other thing called a comfort box that she's a part of other uh, small businesses that come together that you can give as a comfort. How does somebody, yes. how does somebody like tap into this and like get one of these candles? So Coco's Candles has a website. You just have to Google Coco's Candles Scottsdale because they're from, we're in Arizona and she's a local based company. Thank you, Christina. My oh, pleasure. For always you. finding find. the best sunshine stories. Yes. We appreciate Thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> Executive amazing. producer extraordinaire. I love it. Miss Christina. You. She keeps things running. Are you for taking us. these candles back with you? I mean, you guys can have them. I do have a few. So. Okay, so I'm Brandon take was like, <laughs> <laughs> we love like, having this candles smells, in our office. It's so good, right? It smells, it smells amazing. So amazing. So good. <laughs> and thanks to all of you for joining us for Good Morning Sunshine. We certainly appreciate everyone, and our audience continues to grow. Yes, we love that. And if you're watching right now, obviously, do yourself a favor. You're going to go down, uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel. You're going to click on that little bell notification symbol. That way you get alerted every time we upload a new episode or segment. We'll see you back here for the next episode.